Today is Tuesday, September 13th, 2020, and this is a ThinkPad, specifically an L440. And today, we'll be installing Nix OS. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, head on over to your favorite search engine and download Nix OS. You want to head to the Nix OS download page and scroll down a little bit till you see the Linux distribution. This is the by far the easiest way to install Nix OS. Go ahead and download the ISO file and then head on over to your favorite tool for um, nixing your OS. Uh, you'll need a flash drive and uh, I'm using Windows and Rufus and this is a 16 gig SD card. Go ahead and, or um, USB. Go ahead and uh, select your device and let it process and create the drive for you. And then you want to be careful about what specific ports you use. You'll notice I have a USB port and a USB super speed port. And that is the one I'm going to use. I tried this before and it was really slow because USB regular is slow. And we're just going to go ahead and boot this up now. And we want to select USB drive. And this is what it looks like. So selecting the first disc. And now you'll notice I have a network cable plugged into the back of this laptop. That is important because this is a net install. And it does take a little while for it to recognize the network connection and hardware. So if it does come up saying that it doesn't recognize it, that's okay. We'll just try it again. There it is, and it should be loading the installer here. And you notice the network connection hasn't hasn't figured itself out yet. And this I think is a bug um, in the installer. Like it shouldn't it shouldn't do this. But uh, all you got to do is you say close out of it, hit the Windows key or the super key if you will, and then wait for your networking. See now it's gone solid again and now let's uh let's hit that install all right so now it recognizes that there's a network connection i'm going to select next through all of these and then i'm always bob and uh you know there's reasons for that uh that i i can't share for confidentiality reasons um i'm not going to show you my password all right so we'll just click next and yeah, and we'll use GNOME. We're going to, we're going to allow the non free software and we're going to use the erase disc option because I've I just put the SSD in here and I, I know that there's nothing on it or rather nothing that can't be lost. This will erase everything on your computer. So don't do this if you're not ready to part ways with all of your data. This is a spare machine for me, so uh, yeah. All right, we will check back in in a little bit after it's completed. And just like that, we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and click restart now and done. And I'm gonna take out my, I'm gonna wait for it to finish and take out my flash drive. Okay. So now, uh, now we're gonna do the thing with the stuff. Woo! Nix OS. So this is actually a very important screen. This will show you the different um, configurations that you could boot from. And we'll get to that in just one minute. So go ahead and log in with my password. And I'm going to skip the tour and run terminal. Jumping right into the meat and bones of it. So the way that Nix OS works, it's the whole bread and butter of this entire operating system. It's the configuration file. And basically, instead of typing commands onto here and customizing it and making it perfect and you know having to manually do everything, you have a configuration file that allows you to very finely tune your settings and if anything should go wrong, then you can actually revert back to the prior version of your installation by just hitting one command. 
So let's take a look at the stock configuration file that you'll have just by installing Nix. So let's do sudo nano of the file located at etc slash nix os slash configuration. I'm gonna hit the tab key and it'll automatically fill in the rest for me. And then I gotta punch in my password. And there we go. So let's just peek in to what this looks like. So we've got an imports, so it's gonna import details about the hardware configuration. Um, some stuff about the bootloader. Ah, the networking host name. So right now this computer is named Nix OS. Let's call this um, uh, plop top, just for fun. Um, and then some networking stuff, the time zone, localization, we've got X server, whatever that is. Um, oh, cups is enabled by default. Sound is enabled. Uh, a couple of these things, pulse audio. So it looks like there's some deep details that we can um, customize there. Hey, there's our username and there's our groups that we're part of. So it would be as simple as copying and pasting this whole section to create another username. Um, there's our selection where we said we want to allow free software. And then right here, this is an important section. I'm gonna actually go in right in here, right above this little guy. And I'm gonna um, just follow the, the, the spacing rule. So it's two spaces in, and then um, you get, you get to the spot where you can type, and then I'm gonna go to in underneath environment.systempackages, because this is how you can install different packages. So I'm gonna do pkgs.vscode. I'm gonna do oh, pkgs.neofetch. That's, that's probably uh, good for now just as an example of a couple packages. Um, and those are available to search on the Nix package thing. Ah, you know what? Let's put a browser on there um, of our own choosing. Um, P-K-G-S dot. I have to look this one up. I think it's uh, Chromium. And I just Googled for Nix packages and Chromium. Yeah, it's just Chromium. Okay. Um, that's the other way that you can run a program. If you run this, it'll temporarily launch it and download it so you can play with it. But I'm just going to do uh, Chromium. C-H-R-O-M-I-U-M. -M. Okay, that's probably enough software that we're going to add for now. And I'll just keep poking down through this list. Oh, we want to enable SSH. So I'm going to just backspace the... Uh, the thing there. So that right there should enable SSH. Do we need to do this one too? Some programs need sudo wrappers. I don't know what that is. I'm going to leave it. We're not going to touch it. Um, there's the firewall details. So if you, if you needed to disable the firewall, you could do this. I'm going to leave the firewall in place for now. Um, by default, it's going to automatically open up a firewall rule for SSH, I believe, but ping will probably not work. Um, and then there's the end of our configuration file. So the, the big nuts and bolts of this, this file are that, well, the things that are relevant are this imports area, this config packages, and the opening and closing of the the config file. I'm going to hit control S. Nope. Control X. Uh, well, yeah, that, that worked. It saved it and it. We just go back into it make sure that my, my name is there. Yes. So, uh, control X to exit. Um, if you did that without saving it first, you would be prompted to save it. All right. So now, um, you've saved a configuration and you're probably wondering how do I apply that setting? 
Well, you have to run a little command and it is, uh, it is really simple. It's sudo nix os dash rebuild switch. That config file does not get run at startup. You have to run this command. And if you've typed everything correctly into your configuration file and you haven't made any silly errors or typos, then it should build the configuration and look like this crazy mess. Da, da, da. And now it's done. So some of them will work right away. Um, let's, let's try running VS code. So I'll just type in code. And VS Code launched right away. So that's great. Um, and Chromium. Let's see if that works. Yep, that works. Great. And Neo Fetch. There we go. So we're running on the plop top. Nix OS. All right. So. That's really the basics there. If you want to get a little bit deeper into it, um, this also does containerization and allows you to temporarily run things. So remember when we were looking at Chromium and it said for us to run nix shell dash p and then the package name, we can run that with other types of packages. So let's just say we want to search for Oh, what's something interesting that we can do? Um, let's say we wanted to get OBS. And so we're going to do video editing temporarily. So right now, if I run OBS dash shell uh, studio, S-T-U-D-I-O, I do not have OBS installed. So if we do sudo nix shell dash p, OBS-Studio. It's going to launch a little environment. It's basically providing a containerization. And you'll know that you're in the, the, the shell when it says Nix shell and then your username. So it kind of like provides you a little container for this, um, this thing. So I'm going to hit uh, OBS and now it launches. And we'll, we'll say, yeah, whatever, do all this stuff. Um, we used it and now we're done with it. And to get out of that, you just have to type exit. But that has not been installed. So if I type OBS again, not found. I would have to go back into the configuration file and go in and type in... Where's typing the packages? This guy right here. I'd have to come in here. pkgs.obs-studio. And then control X and yes and enter. And then we can hit the up button a couple of times to get to rebuild switch. And it'll run. And now when we run OBS for the first time, it also will come up. All right. We don't need OBS right now, but that's an example of what that is. Let's say, for example, we installed something that messed up our system and we had to roll back. So we've now run two different configurations, one where we installed um, those three programs and changed the name of the system. And the second one where we installed OBS. Let's do a shutdown. Oh, I want to shut down now. There we go. And let's bring our system back up. Remember this page? This is an important area in here. So by default, you are going to be seeing the first, the most recent configuration is considered your default. So right now that would be the one where we installed OBS. But if we go to all configurations, we're actually going to get a listing of the configurations and the dates that we set them. So if we roll back to the original installation, that would take us to our clean install or um, 
possibly if you ran it twice. This one I know for sure is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. And we're going to see that it should go ahead and load us up into the operating system and rebuild it according to that configuration, which would be without OBS. So I'm going to hit that. And then we're going to open up terminal and we're going to try and run OBS. Now let's see what happens not found. So if we go and look at our configuration, I got to type that password again. Whoop. We'll see that the name is there. However, down here in our configuration, uh, oh, interesting. It loaded the old configuration, but the config file that's here still shows the one with my error, even though it's not installed. So if I were to simply run the NixOS rebuild switch bob doodly bop thing again, should be installing OBS now. And OBS, and it runs. So yeah, so that's um, a quick primer on really the, the super basics of it. Another element of this is um, there are certain elements of this config file that you use instead of installing packages. And one of those that I ran into was actually running Docker on here. So you have to actually go down to um, just where, where you're enabling the services like this. There are certain types of things that you can run on your system that are technically, they're done in a different way on, on NixOS. And so um, there's a services.virtualization docker enable command that you can run. Um, but there's actually even, you know, as you saw, there's, there's definitely their own method of containerization that occurs here. And there's actually a way that you can put it into a config and tell it to create a tanner container with the um, dependencies that you're looking for. So just a, a little, little preview of that. Um, so why do you want to use Nix OS? Why did I wait till the end of the video to, to talk about why you would want to use Nix OS? It's a declarative operating system. It allows you to configure all of these settings reliably on one machine. And then once you have this config file, all you have to do is take it and move it to another computer. And so the advantage of that is you have repeatability. You have the ability to get something working really well and then move it to somewhere else. And um, that can be very valuable when you're deploying a whole bunch of things, especially when you combine it with other technologies that allow you to deploy operating systems and then configurations on top of it. So this is the, the app application, bleh, application layer of your deployment to be able to bring up uh, an operating system exactly how you'd like it to be configured and to run different programs. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if not, give it a thumbs down. Uh, be sure to subscribe and uh, we'll see y'all next time. Subscribe.